The Nintendo Switch OLED model may not be the Switch Pro that a lot of people are hoping for, but it's still one undeniably sleek and impressive machine. Now sure, to the untrained eye this might look like just another Nintendo Switch, but the seemingly subtle changes will immediately stand out to anyone who's used the system in handheld mode over the past 4 years. Things like the larger, more vibrant OLED display, a cleaner overall appearance, and a completely redesigned kickstand that isn't borderline useless. Even the dock has been updated, now featuring a built-in Ethernet port for improved online performance, along with a new white appearance to match the OLED's white Joy-Cons, assuming you didn't pick up the Neon version. But what hasn't changed is, well, most everything else. Because the OLED model shares the exact same internal specs as its predecessor, meaning your games will otherwise look and run exactly the same as before. So is it all enough to justify the upgrade for existing Switch owners? Or is it worth specifically sticking out if it's your first Nintendo Switch? especially at the premium price point of $350. Well, let's find out. And let's start with the system's namesake, the brand new OLED screen. And the O might as well stand for Oh My Is It Gorgeous. Thanks to the OLED technology, which lights each pixel individually, colors are far more vibrant and black levels much deeper than ever before. Games like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Cruisin' Blast practically pop off the screen, and everything just has a sharper, bolder look. Literally every single game I tested benefited from the increased contrast and vibrancy. Whether I was exploring the countryside in Breath of the Wild or the dimly lit halls of Luigi's Mansion 3. This might sound a little bit weird, but even the mostly blank loading screens are a joy to behold thanks to the OLED's ability to display true black. Which makes the already thin bezel seemingly non-existent, as compared to the flat dark gray of the previous Switch's LCD screen. Trust me when I say that the video here doesn't fully do it justice, even if you already can see some of the difference. Playing Metroid Dread on it was a treat, especially in the dark, as it nearly felt like the game's world had no boundaries, since the display's edge wasn't clearly visible, which is a sensation that was undoubtedly enhanced by the modestly larger screen that filled more of my view. Now measuring a full 7 inches diagonally, up from 6.2 in the previous version, it's definitely not a dramatic size increase, but the extra real estate is still noticeable, and it's especially appreciated during split-screen multiplayer. And thankfully, the bigger screen didn't result in a noticeably larger system. Instead, the bezel shrunk to make room, giving it a sleeker, more modern look. Now to be clear, the improved screen wasn't something I fully appreciated at first, until after I tried playing my previous Switch. And I was surprised by how striking the difference actually is, with the older model having comparatively dull colors and muted black levels. It almost seemed as if the screen had received the tinted window treatment. Even more ordinary elements like the eShop's orange banner look far more brilliant on the OLED model. The increased contrast also makes the screen marginally easier to see outside, even in direct sunlight. And let me tell you, that's not an easy thing to test living in Seattle. I ran outside the moment I saw a break in the clouds. Now, it's not a night and day difference, but it was a nice little improvement, even if this definitely shouldn't be your main reason for upgrading. And on that note, the speakers have also been upgraded, although I could honestly barely tell the difference. It was only by doing a direct A to B comparison that I was able to discern the slightly richer sound on the OLED model. That aside, don't expect any boost in volume, as the output level is the exact same, at least according to the highest quality decibel meter I could find, being a $1.99 app from the App Store. Perhaps the sound quality will be more obvious to audiophiles, but any improvement is extremely subtle to my casual ears. The overall size and feel of the system is practically identical to before, which makes sense seeing as it's just a tenth of an inch longer and just under an ounce heavier, both of which I found to be imperceptible. There is, however, a new slightly grainy texture on the back that might help provide additional grip, but otherwise I'm indifferent to it. Even the Joy-Cons are identical outside of the new white color, which unfortunately means it's probably only a matter of time before they start exhibiting the exact same drifting problems that have plagued almost every other Joy-Con around the world. Arguably, the biggest upgrade, possibly even more than the screen, is the completely redesigned kickstand. The original Switch had a flimsy little plastic tab that could only support the system at a single 70 degree angle, and even then only when it wasn't busy popping out of its own socket, whereas the OLED's kickstand spans the width of the entire system for increased stability, and it now offers complete freedom of literally any angle between roughly 17 and 75 degrees. And it is wonderful, now accommodating almost every situation I threw at it. And when paired to the larger screen, it makes tabletop gaming a lot more fun and convenient than before, which is especially great when gathering around it with friends for local multiplayer. 
Now, I should note that, despite being nearly the same size as the previous model, it's just enough of a difference to make it incompatible with some existing Labo kits. But, I'm happy to report that Labo VR is not one of them, and it works just fine. And possibly even better now thanks to the OLED display, giving an even more immersive effect. And as one of the biggest fans of Labo VR, heck yes! Battery-wise, the OLED performed nearly identically in our Breath of the Wild test, running out of juice just a bit shy of 5 hours, which even just barely edged out the original version 2 switch by a few minutes. And that was with a screen cranked to the max brightness, so there's a good chance you could get even more out of it with a lower screen setting. Finally, the Switch dock has also seen a slight redesign, although it too shares nearly the same dimensions as before. Besides the new white plastic and shiny interior, which is pretty sharp, it also features a built-in Ethernet port allowing you to connect directly to your router for a more stable online experience. Although, it does come at the expense of a USB port, which you probably didn't need anyway as you'll still find two USB ports on the side, and they've been more than enough for my needs. Also, there's no need for you have to drag your new OLED dock over to a friend's house who owns an older Switch, as both versions are fully compatible with either dock. I really only have one small complaint about the OLED model, and that's the fact that, for as brilliant as the OLED screen is, why are we still stuck with the same black menu theme as before, which is really just charcoal gray? I want a true OLED black theme, darn it! Come on Nintendo, please patch it in! Okay, so let's circle back to the question that we asked at the start. Is the OLED model worth picking up? Well, that's probably going to depend on what type of Switch gamer you are. Because, unlike a lot of Nintendo's previous hardware upgrades, there wasn't a major problem for the OLED to fix. Outside of possibly the garbage tier kickstand. And subsequently, it doesn't add anything significant either. The OLED model still plays the exact same games in exactly the same way as a previous model. Which means that if you primarily play games on the TV, there is nothing here that will benefit you in any way. Even the Ethernet port can be bought as an accessory for the existing Switch. And as such, I would recommend against upgrading for anyone who primarily plays at home on the TV. But, for those who do intend to play the Nintendo Switch in portable mode, well, you're in for a treat, as you simply can't do any better than the OLED model. It's just flat out a better system, one that will very likely make your playtime more enjoyable, with a bigger screen that provides a richer, brighter image, and a kickstand that'll actually make you want to use it. The Nintendo Switch OLED model might not blow you away at first glance, but it leaves a wonderful impression that will have you wondering what you ever liked about your original Switch in the first place. Okay, that might be a little extreme, but point is it's a fantastic upgrade for anyone looking to game on the go, and I like the OLED model a lot as a handheld machine. Now whether that's worth a $350 upgrade is more for you to decide, but if you're a first time buyer it's a no brainer to seek out the OLED if you can if you intend to play on the go. And there you have it, Game Explains review of the Nintendo Switch OLED model. But if you want even more, make sure to check out our in-depth review of Metroid Dread 2. Thank you so much for watching, and of course make sure to click that subscribe button and ring that bell for more Nintendo Switch OLED, Metroid Dread, and maybe one day, a Nintendo Switch Pro 2. We'll catch you later. Bye everyone!